So our next speaker um, uh, is has a, sort of a very special speaker to me, uh, Shai Levy, who is the CTO and co-founder of No Name Security. Um, I had the unique privilege of, of getting to meet Shai, uh, as well as co-founder Oz Golan, about two years ago as they were founding No Name Security Company. And here I am now almost two years later uh, as a uh, as a as the CISO and a, and a, and a uh, alumni customer of of No Name, so it's a it's a real privilege to introduce uh, Shai to everybody. Um, Shai, um, thank you for joining us today. Oh, did we um, did we lose Shai for a moment? Sorry about that. There we go. Trouble at the last minute, obviously. No problem. Good afternoon, Shai. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So we we have a share screen on on there we go now we have the screen up and so shy I will exit stage left and I'll see you back in about twenty minutes. Sure. All right. Um, so hey guys, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening uh, to what I have to say. Um, my talk is around securing the modern uh, API ecosystem. Let me just try to bring it here. Um, I can't look at the, while I'm presenting, it's kind of hard to look at the chat, but if you have questions, I'll kind of go in between to, to look at the comments if there are any. Um, I don't know if we'll need the whole 20 minutes. I'll try to make it brief. Um, it's going to be more um, view from above. I'm not going to go uh, very detailed uh, because I think it's important to, to, to give some clarity into what API security actually means, uh, at least for no name. And I think in general to, to to the ecosystem, right? Because you hear a lot about API security and you're not really sure what it includes. Um, so first of all, who I am, I'm Shai Levy. I'm co-founder and CTO at No Name Security. Um, we were founded in 2020. We are 150 employees. Um, we've raised $85 million to date and we deal with API security. Why do we deal with API security? Why do we need to talk about API security or who cares? Um, so I believe you as an audience already are well, well aware of it, but I'll, I'll talk about it briefly anyway, because I think it's important to set the stage. Um, so any critical pipeline in the modern org uh, is based on APIs, right? If you think about any critical communication, there's two pieces of sw software that are communicating within it. Um, any pipeline that it can be, transactions, um, financial transactions, health information, whatever you can think of is definitely being sent and received over API channels. Um, so the modern org is definitely relying on APIs and its critical pipelines. The second thing that happened is that the modern environment is scattered. You, you talk with a large organization and you're like, are you using the cloud? And they're like, yes. And then you'll, you might ask, are you using AWS? The answer is yes. Are you using GCP? The answer is yes. They're, they're using all cloud providers. Um, they're using more than one API gateway. Um, usually they're not even sure which APIs they have where. Um, that's a very common uh, challenge for organizations. They have various sites around the world, right? They have a site in the US, site in South Africa, South site in China, whatever it might be. Um, and it's hard for them to gain control or understanding where their APIs are. And the third thing that, that actually happens is that developers are moving very fast. Business needs come in um, and they don't go through security. Uh, you have to develop something quickly. You have to enable a partnership with some uh, to enable um, business logic for some partner. Um, and you just set it up as fast as you can. And the result of all those things is that the organization, the, the security org, isn't aware of where they, the APIs are or what they're doing. Those, those two two things are kind of missing, and they know that they are dealing with very critical information. That made it that APIs are actually the number one attack vector already today. Uh, we are aware that Gartner predicted that it would be by 2022, but actually um, we feel it very much already now. Um, all those uh, companies were either uh, influenced by API vulnerability that was disclosed or discovered, or that was actually abused or a breach, if you will. Uh, the challenges are, well, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, roughly 30% of the APIs the organization isn't even aware of. Um, they're just on some account on the side in some AWS environment. They might be in a, in a not routed through the load balancer, not routed through the API gateway, kind of sporadic. Um, that's the first challenge. The second challenge is when you think about, and I, I believe the previous speaker talked about that as well, when you look, look on the current available solutions in order to protect your APIs, 
they're kind of looking at APIs in very simplistic manner. They don't try to make sense of how a normal request looks like, how a, a bad, like what's the normal response that you should look like, um, what is a problematic input, uh, what is correlated to what, uh, what is dependent on what, um, what's a normal session, what's an abnormal session. They're more of the classic type of protection, which is really a WAF protection, like a DDoS type of attack or injection type of attack. Not very common uh, for API vulnerabilities, if, if you think about that. Penetration testing, that's great. The problem is that it's manual. And we talked about it in most cases, right? There are automatic pen tests, uh, but those, again, are focused very heavily on the WAF side of issues, if you will. Um, so the manual pen testing is a great way to, to find API issues. The problem is that it doesn't scale. So when you talk about large organization with 10,000 APIs, it becomes hard to do pen tests, especially when they change so fast, as, as we spoke previously. And the last thing is bug bounties. Bug bounties are also effective for API security. They're not completely ineffective. It just, it, you don't have bug bounties as, as many APIs as you have. It just, there is no way. Um, you, you don't have enough people on the other side of the bug bounty, really, um, to, to find your API vulnerabilities. Um, and the, thing, the third thing that, that we like to talk about is that APIs are hard to control. So when you look at your API gateway, um, this is an example from Apigee. The configuration is an XML file. When you want to change something, you edit that XML file. When you have 10,000 API proxies, you have to edit 10,000 XML files, or you have some standards, and it becomes kind of difficult to know that all API proxies are configured properly. Um, and that's the third thing that we like to talk about. Now, what is API security? What does it actually include? Uh, so we talked about the problem. Now let's talk about what do we expect to have from a solution or from, yeah, basically from a solution to, to our problem. So what we like to look at at No Name is our three main pillars um, that we feel reflect very well um, what you should get from your API security solution. The first pillar is the posture management. Piece. And under that, we call it the discovery piece, which, which APIs you have out there, which information are they sending or receiving, which sensitive data are they interacting with, how many consumers are on the other end of this API, um, is this API authenticated or not, which application does this API belong to, who's the owner of that API, which team owns that API, is this API routed correctly, do I have potential uh, wrong routes? Can it be that I open my internal API to the internet? Can it be that I have this uh, API that is authenticated? Everybody is communicating with it with authentication. But if I were to take the authentication out, I would still be able to access it, meaning the authentication is not being enforced. And those are types of misconfigurations uh, that you really want to clean up even before you get to the runtime security. I didn't talk about an adversary on the other end taking abuse of you. Um, basically, even before you get to that point, there are so many issues that you can find just from looking at the configuration and understanding the environment, cleaning those up would already put you in a significantly better spot than you would have if you won't go through that, that phase. Because if you think about it, I showed that slide earlier, that list of, of if you will, the impact on, on the ecosystem, um, the majority of those could have been fixed just by having good posture management. So having no misconfigurations, understanding where your APIs are, what are they sending, what are they receiving, would already clean most of those up. So if you do decide to use an API security solution, make sure it does posture management, make sure it looks for misconfigurations and not just runtime security. I mean, I know a lot of API security um, products or, or ventures are focused very heavily on runtime. Um, I believe it's a it's a common fault because if you can clean up things way before you get to that, then you should probably do that. The second piece is the runtime security. It is important. It is critical. You want to understand how your APIs are behaving. Um, you want to have some baseline in real time uh, based on the actual API behavior. You want to have some AI model trying to make sense of what is going on. So if you do have an attacker, for a very intricate API vulnerability that you couldn't clean before that step, um, then you do want you know, the, the red alarm to, to ring and, and basically be able to clean it up. 
The third pillar that, that we like to talk about is the SDLC part. So whenever you're about to release a new API or update an, an existing API, you want to be certain or you want to have confidence that you're not introducing new vulnerabilities into your uh, landscape. Um, and those three pillars are what No Name aims to do. So we're not an API security company that only sits in the middle bracket. We're not an API security company that just sits in the left or the right bracket. We really believe that you need to solve the API security problem with one tool. This is kind of our approach. Um, and let's talk a bit about our solution or the, the philosophy behind the, the solution at NoName. So we like to call it DART. Um, DART stands for discovery, analysis, remediation, and testing, or discover, analyze, remediate, and test. Um, for the discovery piece, similar to what I talked about earlier, API and application, authentication, how many consumers are on the other end, sensitive data types, so on and so forth. And also uh, finding misconfigurations. So cleaning up those potential faults that, you know, that can catch you uh, later on. Analysis. So analysis mainly is focused around the AI anomaly detection, which I believe my previous speaker talked about uh, earlier. Um, so you kind of want to have a baseline in place, analyzing the API behavior. You want to understand what's a normal pattern and what's an abnormal pattern. And when an abnormal pattern happens, you want to make sure to, to let the organization know. Um, in some cases, you might even want to block or prevent that transaction or that adversary from being able to access your APIs further. Obviously, again, you don't just want to analyze the runtime uh, interactions. You want to analyze the configuration and clean those up. Third step is remediation. And I think that's another important step to talk about. A lot of security, a lot of great security tools exist out there, but their integration is really lacking, which makes it so that if you want to see what they find, you have to open their console. You have, you have yet another screen you have to look at, basically. And security teams are already swamped, as it is. Um, and so if you don't flow your insights into the centralized tool where they're already looking at, most chances is they, they won't even know that it happened. And so that's why we put a lot of focus around that uh, in our uh, strategy, if you will. Um, make sure you flow the information that you, you gathered or the, the interesting insights that you have to where the, the, the attention is already is. Um, and the fourth step is the testing piece. The idea around that is to enable you to actively test uh, your APIs. Um, not wait for an attacker to test you. Whenever you're about to release a new version, whenever you're about to update your API, you probably want to run some scenarios against that. Um, by now, there's a lot of research around API testing, and it has a lot of challenges. I can give you a few. Um, if you think about that, if you want to pull out a resource, you have to create it first. If you want to check if you have broken authorization, you want one user to create a resource and trying to pull that resource from a different user. You want to clean up at the end of a decent test. And so testing APIs is kind of tricky. You really have to understand the intricacies of how the API actually works. Um, I believe NoName is very, very novel uh, on that front. Uh, but again, all, everything I mentioned now, it's not, I, I don't tell you that you have to use NoName. You don't. Um, some of that you could probably develop at home. Uh, problem with that is that usually security teams are already have so much they have to deal with. And now building that system or platform to protect their own APIs is usually usually way too much to ask from the security team to, to do. Uh, but I'm going to touch that again uh, in a bit. So when I kind of summarize that, um, when we look at NoName uh, API security platform, uh, we like to say that we solve the problem holistically or from all angles. Um, there's the security posture management, which includes the discovery and the misconfiguration, which we do. There's the real-time or runtime security, which the idea is to monitor your API's interactions in real time and make sure that there's no uh, suspicious activity happening there. And there's the third front, which is the development lifecycle. So whenever you're about to release a new version, you want to be confident that you're in a good spot. Now, a, a thing that I want to address, and maybe that will bring us to a close, really, um, is that you don't have to wait for no name in order to 
do some API security yourself. Um, I would tell you that I definitely recommend you to talk with us, but if you don't want to talk with us, um, I do suggest that at least get some understanding about where you stand in terms of your API security. So the, the simplest thing that you could really do, activate logging on your API gateway, activate logging in your cloud environment, activate logging wherever you can, consume those log into a Splunk collection, start filtering what is an API and what isn't, and you'll already have some very basic catalog of what your APIs are. And I'm pretty, pretty sure you'll be surprised by the amount of APIs that you're going to see just by consuming those logs. By the way, NoName also consumes that logs and activates them automatically. So everything is being done automatically. Um, we don't just rely on logging, but it's a good first step for, for initial catalog, really. Um, and so I do recommend you to, to, to do that. Um, don't just wait and say, hey, API security is a 2022 problem, 2023 problem. Maybe that's when you actually want to kick off the project, um, but at least get some sense of, of where you stand there. Um, again, because if we look at that list earlier, that one, um, the majority of those could have been cleaned in five minutes. Um, if they would have gave it a bit of thought, um, a bit of attention to their API security, um, the majority of those wouldn't have occurred. Um, and it's not that I, I, I rely on the, the developers. The developers are, are doing what they can given the time constraints, right? But they are going to introduce uh, security vulnerabilities. And it, it is up to security to, to basically improve that. There is shifting left, and the developers are going to improve and going to develop uh, less security issues. But it's still the security team or the security org or uh, responsibility uh, to make sure the organization isn't impacted or is at risk. Um, yeah, I think that sums up uh, what I have to tell you guys. I really want to make this interactive if you have anything on your uh, agenda and the Q&A. By the way, my email address is here. Feel free to ask me any questions regarding API security in general, cybersecurity in general. Um, I promise not to try to sell you uh, too much. Um, yeah, let me stop my sharing. Let's see if there's any questions. Great. Uh, yeah, Shai, I have a, a couple, a uh, couple queued up, but I'm going to st start first with with my question, sure. because when I was a uh, CISO in financial for several years, uh, the question I was asked uh, so often was, "What keeps me up at night?" And so for you, like, what, what, what remains uh, sort of unsolved uh, in, in API security? What when you look out in the future? What are what are some things that we still need to uh, develop strategies, platforms, technologies to to address? So if we talk about technology, I think there's a um, significant uh, road to the active testing to go through. Um, the challenges around API testing, there's a lot, a lot of research on, the, on that subject. Um, there's still some technological challenges that haven't been solved. Anonym is very in, in the modern days of it and really pushing it forward, uh, but I don't think it's yet as advanced as it can get. So that's from a technological standpoint. From uh, implementation standpoint, I would say there, there's a certain, so I think within the org, within the organizations, the modern organizations, the security teams are very eager to, to get the API security under control. Um, and I think sometimes there's like, it's very hard for them to, to kick it in gear. Like they really want to do it. And it's, they, they struggle with the API gateways teams. They struggle with the cloud teams. Like that might happen. Um, but I think that that problem is, is kind of resolving itself as time goes by, because I think, you know, they see all those companies being impacted and, and they get much more attention. Th then they get much more attention from the API gateway team. They get much more attention from the cloud team. And so we really see this uh, insane demand for API security happening like now, I guess. Yes, yeah, so, so security teams should never let uh, someone else's crisis go to waste uh, in terms of making <laughs> right. Case for uh, you know case for a change. So um, I, I asked the um, Dan this question previously uh, about machine learning. So can right. you um, can you talk about as a security team how do we uh, how do we trust the models? Um, you know I'm used to writing my own Splunk rules that will tell me exactly what I'm alerted to. Um, and this machine learning uh, unsupervised state, how do I begin to trust that that is the that it's the right approach? Uh, great question. So I, I would address it in two ways. Um, the simple answer, don't trust anything. 
<laughs> trust yourself, right? Don't trust the model. Uh, trust what you know. Trust you definitely know as an operator within an organization. Your understanding of an API is bigger than the, the model attention or the model understanding. The problem is you're not sitting in real time on every single packet and looking at, looking at it with your own eyes, right? You do need to convert it into some automated logic. Um, so the first thing I would say is that APIs are structured. Um, that gives us a major, major benefit in doing uh, machine learning. Any machine learning over structured data is so much easier than machine learning on unstructured data. Understanding what is correlating with what, what is the normal behavior, what is the normal pattern when you're dealing with set structures, much easier. So that's the reason that machine learning works that well for API security. The second thing I would say is that if you're using a security tool with machine learning, you're going to have some false positives. You're, you're definitely going to have some. There, there is no other answer to that. The, the goal is two things. One, to make them as little as possible. And two, to make your experience when you do stumble upon false positive, to make your experience in resolving that as fast as possible. This is the reason that in No Name Security, we, we actually give you the ability to tell us, hey, this was a false positive on the platform itself with an instant button. And the model automatically readjusts. It says, okay, the operator that knows more than we do tells us that this was false positive, we should relearn this. And this is kind of the way it works. So I would definitely aim for those types of solutions uh, and not just buzzwords that it's 100%. Say, no, it's, nothing is 100%, right? Uh, great. So the the, the, the question about uh, going back to like kind of the, 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 uh, the original problem of, of API security, of course, is in inventory management, uh, saying right. shadow, rogue, uh, legacy, whatever term you want to call that. Uh, so what are the what's the biggest challenge to 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 that discovery to have an inventory and what's the what's the solve great um okay so the the challenge to having a good discovery is that if you rely only on the centralized pieces so only on your api gateway to gain the discovery then if everything that isn't routed through your gateway and i guarantee you that you have some of that um you will never know about that you won't see it. You won't know what's going on there. The solve is to integrate in, on a deeper level, to integrate with the actual infrastructure, to integrate directly with your cloud provider. So when you integrate with the, the cloud, any server that is hosting API can be discovered uh, through one measure or another. Talk to us at No Name if you're curious. Uh, we're really good at finding those APIs. When you're talking about the data center, the approach would be to integrate with what sits in the front. So you want to integrate with this data center load balancer, such as the F5 or the Citrix or the Palo Alto that everything is going through anyway, right? And you want to filter out the API traffic from that and understand, okay, this, those are the APIs that I see on my load balancer. This is the APIs that I see on my gateway. There's the Delta. Those are the unmanaged ones. Let's address that, right? And Noname does it so well uh, as a solution um, that I think, well, either do it manually or, or talk to us, right? <laughs> Those are your options, really. Um, yeah, so we're uh, we're just just right at the edge of our time here, so uh, we'll we'll wrap there. But uh, of course, if you do want to continue the conversation, we have the um, uh, the partner village. We're over there um, uh, all day. Uh, Shy, um, it's a pleasure seeing you, uh, and thank you for uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon.